Hello, everyone. It's me, Andrew. I'm here at Star Cottage Studio, which is Allegory Gallery's biggest project to date. Um, it's my personal studio and the future home of the shipping department at Allegory Gallery. So it's a lovely, albeit snowy day here in Ligonier, Pennsylvania. Uh, yeah, lots of snow, which is not my favorite. I'm ready for the flowers. Bring on the flowers. Um, all of my flowers are kind of looking a little, a little sad because they're covered in a layer of ice and snow. Hopefully it's a little bit warmer where you are and uh, the weather is a little bit nicer. Um, I've, I've been noticing a lot of people posting pictures of uh, their gardens and I'm a little bit jealous because all of my stuff is is uh kind of delayed with all the snow so yeah and then today I, i'm a little bit late today because i unfortunately got behind the school bus and you know you get behind the school bus and then you're you have to stop every couple feet to let the kids out so it is what it is we're here now uh hopefully you will be able to join us um, I see a couple people are tuning in. Marion says, actually have a snowfall warning. Oh, no. Yeah, we got um, yesterday, our friend, uh, Lynn Suprock, she uh, came over. She actually moved to the area a few years ago to help with her father-in-law and, um, like, hang out with, with him. And she's one of my crafty friends. And because of COVID, we haven't seen each other um since then so yesterday was the first time we got to see each other um in a few years um and so we basically talked for a long time and I, we showed her the cottage and are making plans and hopefully we'll get to hang out again and it won't be another couple years um so that was nice um robin says hi andrew it's 99 right now holy guacamole that's that's the other side of the spectrum. I'm not interested in that. I think I would pass out. Um, maybe we can meet somewhere in the middle, you know? A little of our snow and a little bit of your 99 degree weather. It'll be like a balmy 75, 73, something like that. Uh, Terry B is watching. Hey, Terry, hopefully you're having a good Tuesday so far. Um, so yeah, I've been busy, busy, busy getting ready for a lot of different deadlines. I applied for um, an adorned space. Um, so basically, SNAG, which is the Society of North American Goldsmiths, they have an annual conference. And this is the first time that they've been able to have a physical conference since Corona. So um so yeah, so it's in Providence, Rhode Island, and I'm a member of a local kind of club, and it's the Allegheny's Metal Collective, and uh, the Allegheny's Metal Collective meets up once a month, and they either do a demo of some, of a technique, or they do um, uh, like a slide jam thing where, you know, it's basically a critique for for people who are out of school. Um, so it's a really cool, fun um, group. And uh, I'm fairly new to the group. So it, it's been interesting getting kind of situated. I can be a little bit awkward sometimes. So it's nice that uh, everybody's been super friendly and super kind. But anyway, so uh, SNAG, they put out uh, a call for curation. So uh, different groups and people can submit uh, uh, curatorial, curatorial proposals and they can set up little exhibitions at the conference. So the one that the Allegheny's Metal Collective did was all about earrings and kind of getting through the pandemic. And so I made a pair of earrings, which you all, if you watched yesterday, you would have seen them. William showed them. Um, and yeah, so that was fun. Um, and I've been busy with that. And then there's um, a virtual show that Snag is doing 
um, that's in uh, that's in kind of conjunction with the um, with the conference, and I'm applying for that. And then there's another uh, grant that I'm working on, and hopefully I'll finish that up in a few days because that would be nice. Anyways, lots of things going on here. Hopefully uh, things are going well where you are. Um, I also hope that I posted to the right um, page because there's one page that I'm, uh, the, the little logos are blacked out. And so I can't, I couldn't see an amusing stream yard, which is a little bit of the new frontier for me. So hopefully I'm in the right place. If not, I'll go back later and delete things if they're in the wrong place. So this is one of my uh, favorite kind of necklaces to do. You may have seen me do this before. So if you've seen this, um, either hang out and, you know, just chill with me. Or you can um, skip it because I've already kind of shown this before. Um, and we can make this a little bit more elaborate or change it up. But I used to do a lot of different shows um, before we had the store and a lot of wholesale and things like that. So what I would do is I'd make these uh, amulet, I call them treasure necklaces, but then I call everything treasure necklaces. So, you know, I like, I like treasure. So I used to make these quite often and they were consistent sellers and hopefully you all will enjoy this technique because um, it did well for me. And I think it's, it's not anything that's like revolutionary, um, but it is something that I think is pretty fun. So hopefully you all will enjoy it as well. All right. Um, if you're watching, I see there's a bunch of folks watching. Um, let us say hi and let us know where you're from. And hopefully we'll continue building community because that's what we're all about here at Allegory Gallery is building community. All right, so we're gonna make a treasure necklace. I thought that would be fun or an amulet necklace. Um, and sometimes when people think of amulets, they think of um, like specific charms and kind of talismans to award away bad energy. Um, and yes, that's something you can certainly do. I feel like, um, oh, it started snowing again. I can see it out the window. Oh, but, well, anyways, that's going to be interesting going home. Anyway, so uh, that's certainly something you can do. But I also think that there are certain things that, um, I don't know how to put it. Maybe the best way of saying is there's a common belief that there's a signature to all things. And it's kind of like the fingerprint of the divine uh, or whatever, how, however you see that, the universe or God or whatever. And those things all have a unique and individual signature. It's kind of like how everybody is kind of the same, but different. Um, and so all things kind of have these signatures about them. And those are kind of uh, an energetic, um, they all have an energetic resonance to them. So, and you can, and whether or not you believe that or not, you know, I know some people are like very anti-woo-woo and they're like, no, not. This is, I believe in science. Um, there is something to the science that, you know, uh, things resonate on different, you know, they have all different, re you know, energetic levels and there, there is a science behind it. And I think like from my own experiences, you can go out into the world and feel these things. So it's not something that, you know, is a theoretical kind of thing. It's something that's a, a you know, you can go out and feel those things. And I think some people are more in tune with it and, and some people not. But regardless of whether or not you are interested in that, it's okay. Um, you can still make this design and it will be wonderful. And you don't have to have the woo-woo, as they say. So, yeah. So um, whether or not you go with this in kind of a spiritual vibe or if you're just going through this through an aesthetic vibe, that's totally cool. No one's going to harp on you. Um, one thing I will say is that sometimes 
the I think that sometimes if you have something that's beautiful or special uh, and you wear that, uh, it, it makes you feel better and feels more empowered. So whether or not it's like a, a psychosomatic thing where you are, you know, an idea is placed and, um, you know, that kind of has a, a placebo effect, um, you know, if that's what's what's happening, cool, as long as it's working, right? So, um, yeah, I hopefully, hopefully, you know, you all are able to enjoy this regardless of what your feelings are. Um, and I probably should say, like, do you feel like there's an edu uh, energetic resonance to things, you know, or are you anti-woo-woo? I don't know. Let's see. I see a couple people popped on since I did the talk talk. Julie is watching. Hey, Julie. Sarah is watching from Alberta, Canada. Hi, Sarah from Alberta, Canada. Sharon Westhoff is from tuning in from Kansas or Arkansas, rather. Uh, howdy. Hopefully you're doing well. Um, Debbie is watching. Howdy, Debbie. Sandra is tuning in from Missouri. Hey, Sandra. And Debbie's in Iowa. Julie says, Robin, why the heck is it so dang hot there already? I did a little bit of editing there, but you get, you know, I don't want to get in trouble again, y'all. I got in trouble a little bit ago and my, my accounts were all locked down. So I've been trying to be better. No, no naughty words for me and no inferences of pretend violence. Um, Christy is watching. Hey, Christy. Harry's watching. Hey, Harry. He's tuning in from Iowa, Des Moines. Um, let's see. Robin says that they are in a pickle come July. Forest fires up north already. We need rain so bad. Well, hopefully we'll send some of those rain thoughts to y'all. Um, back when I was a kid, they used to sell rain sticks a lot. I haven't seen those in years and years and years. Hopefully they still have that. Maybe somebody can pick one up and send it to Robin so that she can, I like them, you know, they were very relaxing, but I haven't seen them in a long time. Um, Debbie says that they need rain here too. Well, it's snowing right now. So that's a precipitation, I guess. And It'll eventually melt and make our driveway here super, super muddy, which it already is. It's not cold enough for it to be frozen solid, but it is cold enough that um, that it's snowing. So there's like a layer of ice and snow, but also mud. And it splay, sprays all over the car, which is so fun and so exciting. But I'm not the only one because I, I see it when I drive around and see other people who have this beautiful brown splattering on their car. It's like a sign of, of the times. Um, Sharon says frequencies. Yeah. So, you know, I, I think that sometimes this is a hot button topic because um, people have connotations about it. Um, and sometimes those connotations are less than positive. Um, and especially when I was growing up, there was this idea that anything that was metaphysical or anything that couldn't be explained that wasn't in a certain tradition was bad and wrong. Um, and so some of that, you know, is not as uh, prevalent nowadays, which is kind of good. I kind of think that, you know, education and, and knowledge is power. So the more you know about things, you know, the better you are, whether you uh, subscribe to it or not. So I think it's pretty fascinating and really neat. And a lot of these things are personal adornment is tied with these different traditions and beliefs. So like in Turkey, for example, they have the evil eye. And when somebody says evil eye, you know, and they may not know about it, the first thing that pops in my mind is, or their mind is, oh, it's evil because it's called the evil eye. But it's actually something that uh, repels negative and bad intention. And who couldn't use that? You know, 
I think a lot of times uh, there's this idea that we are somehow separated from these things because we have computers and we have technology and science and all those things. Um, but at the end of the day, there's a lot of things that can't be explained. Um, and there, there are a lot of things that are kind of woven into the human experience. Um, and whether or not they're good or bad, uh, it, they, they're there. So, um, yeah, why not? Um, Robin says, all we can do is make it rain beads. Well, you never know. You, you shake that stick a little bit. Um, Norma's watching. Hey, Norma, you're actually pretty early. I mean, we've been taught, I've been talking about for about 15 minutes and people are like, is he going to ever do the project? Are we going to listen about his, 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 uh, his uh, spirituality talk talk? Um, we will, we will. I'm just getting through the comments, y'all. Hold, hold tight. We're getting there. Uh, Michelle says, there's nothing wrong with finding comfort in those things you love. I also think that, like, you know, have you ever, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but have you ever gone into a situation where you're like, you know, you know something's wrong, like there's a danger. And maybe it's because you're perceiving things like, you know, the lights are dim and you saw somebody walking around sketchy earlier or, you know, there's a certain level of intuition um, and maybe that's grounded in your perceptions or micro vibrations or whatever. But, uh, you know, there are times when things are kind of inexplicably um, you know, you just have those feelings and whether they're good or bad, you can kind of use that, uh, sensitivity to work with your jewelry or your creation. And I kind of like, and this is kind of a side note, but not a side note because we're kind of talking about jewelry making. But for me, whenever I'm in a bad mood or I'm in a terrible mood, I won't make jewelry. I'll do something else. And one of the reasons why is for one, if I'm super upset and angry, chances are I'm going to mess up whatever I'm working on. So it's basically like lighting money on fire and throwing it into the wind and watching it burn up. So for me that, you know, that's the most practical thing. But I also think that whenever I'm making something, I like to imbue whatever I'm working on with positive energy. So I think about good things. I listen to books on tape or audiobooks. I'm dating myself. Um, and I kind of try to imbue those objects with positive energy. And whether or not the, um, the end user or whoever gets my work feels it or not, um, you know, that that's up to them. Once it leaves my hand, it kind of takes on its own life. But for me, I think it like it's a it's a good thing. In my mind, I want to have these things hold that resonance and have that good energy and promote good energy into the world and go forth and kind of spread that good energy. Um, the world can be a very cruel and ugly place sometimes. So I feel like as a maker. It's kind of like my calling to make the world a little bit be more beautiful and a little bit less, uh, you know, less scary or less uh, bad, you know. And there, there's another conversation about light and dark and different aspects of personality and, and spirit and stuff. And that's a, that's a whole other kind of topic. But for me, I feel like it's my calling to help uh, fix things, you know, there, there's a Jewish concept. It's, um, and maybe y'all know it better than I do. It's, um, uh, oh, it disappeared to, um, uh, it was, uh, to, oh, well, it means basically mending the world. Um, and it starts with a T and there's some K's in there. Um, but anyway, so that's kind of my purpose when I'm making things. So when I'm making stuff, I try to focus on good things um, while I'm making things so that they are imbued with that positive energy. But also when I'm making stuff, it it automatically puts me in a kind of a good mood. And so maybe it's kind of selfish or 
whatever, maybe it's a byproduct, um, but I'm really interested in the idea of ritual. And ritual um, is kind of any process that's repeatable to make a, a, a desired outcome. So a ritual might be um, wearing the same jersey to a sporting event and having to, you know, jump over the entranceway three times. And then every time you do that, your sports team will win. That's a simple thing of ritual or, but really it's a conditioning process. So anything you can do, you know, uh, to create that kind of creative process is all for the better. So basically like if you, when I work, I like to light candles and I'll light a little bit of incense and it's, it's, or I'll put on my apron and put on my glasses and that's uh, my safety glasses. And that's kind of me letting my brain know that it's time to work and time to kind of create. So whenever you pick up something, like you pick up your pliers, then you're kind of like, it's, it's like, it's go time. So it's, it's kind of like a conditioning for an athlete where they do certain things in a ritualistic way so that they can get uh, the desired outcome. So, and I think that that applies for regular, regular people too and their creative practices, um, because, you know, then you're, you're kind of, you, you condition yourself to be kind of like, a, to be the most creative possible. All right. Um, Julie says, I embrace the woo woo. Oh, good. Marianne says, go for the woo woo. Um, Kathy's tuning in from Montana. Hey, Kathy. Um, Michelle says, I like it, Marianne. Um, Julie says, sorry, I use bad words. It's fine if y'all use them, but me, I'm sensitive because I don't want, I got, I got the PTSD about getting restricted again. Um, so y'all can say whatever you want in theory, you know, hopefully y'all don't get restricted either. Um, Michelle says, behave here. I'm trying, I'm trying my best y'all. Um, Robin says, those are so cool. Uh, Marion says, I wear a Thor's hammer. That's cool. Um, a lot of the blacksmith friends that I have, they wear Thor's hammers too. Um, and that's pretty neat, I think. Um, and anything that I think is important to you and feels nice to you, why not? Um, I have a lot of friends who they derive a lot of comfort um, from making rosaries and they carry those rosaries with them um, and they give them as gifts and, and different things like that. And we had a wonderful, I'm gonna try not to get choked up. Um, there was um, a little girl who used to live in town, her name Maggie, and um, unfortunately she passed away, but um, while she was going through treatment, um, she was in a program called Beads of Courage. And for every procedure you get, um, or the, the children uh, who are facing um, uh, Ill, uh, illness, they, for every time they go and get a treatment, they get a bead. And it's a visual storytelling thing. Um, and hopefully it gives them a little bit of courage when they're doing this. But anyways, after she passed, her parents would come in and make uh, rosaries from the beads that they got. Um, and they gave those rosaries to their friends and family members uh, to remember Maggie and to honor her um, in her journey. Um, and her sister also used to come in and make those rosaries and we would all sit around. Um, they moved out to Colorado, which is, I'm, I'm sad that they're, uh, they moved out, but you know, I understand uh, that it's kind of hard to be in a place where, um, you know, you have all these memories uh, attached to a certain place. And so anyways, so Michelle, so many of the ancient tribes and peoples must have known something, right? Um, I agree. And I think it's so fascinating. Um, I think if I was, uh, you know, if I lived a different life, I probably would have been into like anthropology um, because I think people are so fascinating and why they do things um, and uh, how they do them. And I think it's really cool. Sharon's tuning in. Hey, Sharon. Donna says, hello, Andrew and everyone. It's going to be 87 here in 
uh, here on Sunday and storms back next Tuesday. This is spring in central Alabama. Yeah. Um, Donna says, I'm the same way. Harry says, I studied shamanic craft practices and studied with um, uh, Rose, uh, Rose uh, Crew. I don't know how to say that. Um, but I, I remember them being having a place in New York. There was a library, a lending library there um, that you could go to and look at books. And it was in, I want to say the East Village off of Union Square. Uh, for He said for 30 years and both suggested that vibrations are very much a part of our universe. Science uh, supports that also. Much of my jewelry is made with intent, putting energy into the work. Uh, I I'm, uh, agree. And Julie, has, she knew when I was talking about uh, Takan Olam. I'm probably butchering it. You know, the thing is, is I, I read a lot of things, but I don't actually know how things sound. So I probably sound not the most educated about those things. But uh, yeah, oh, well. Uh, Suzanne is tuning in. Howdy. Um, Gail has a different word, and that means right, a righteous man. That's the, it's different. Um, Michelle says, nice talk talk today, Andrew. Well, thank you. Sharon says, I love Beads of Courage. Me too. Um, Michelle says, Beads of Courage is a great thing. I agree. Um, and Marion says, that's a great use of the beads uh, that you get at uh, through Beads of Courage. Uh, Trisha or Tisha says, I lost a twin. Uh, go we do something. All right. Um, June is tuning in. Hey, June. So let's all kind of um, get to work, right? Um, hopefully you all are having a good Tuesday. And are, um, in theory, you could make along with me if you want, because I'm a kind of a to slow talker. So um, I'm sure you could probably bust out your tools and it would be all good. Um, our, my studio is a little bit in shambles today because we're reinforcing one of my tables here in the studio. So uh, I'm, I lost that kind of workspace. Uh, I don't know if we're going to be able to do it today fixing it um, because it's snowy out here and it's snowing again. Um, but, you know, we'll see. All right, let's flip this around. You'll see the ceiling for a moment on the top of my head. But you can see I'm fixing the, we're reinforcing the table. So that's happening. All right. So here you go. This stand, it, uh, one of the little things broke. So it's a little bit uh, tricksy. All right. So for today's project, let me angle this a little bit further down. We're going to um, use some bronze wire. This is 14 gauge bronze wire. So it's fairly heavy duty. Um, and if you can anneal this um, and make it dead soft, all the better because, um, you know, it, it is uh, a bronze can be a stiff wire or stiff metal, uh, even harder if it's brass. Um, but, uh, so sometimes if you manipulate this a lot, you will definitely need to, um, anneal your metal, which basically means heating it, um, until there's a couple different signs, but it's kind of relaxing the molecular structure of the metal crystals. And then that way, um, it's more pliable and easier to manipulate. Um, if you, use it and keep work hardening it and mess with it. Um, it's kind of good to work hard on your pieces so that they retain their shape, but sometimes it can be hard on your hands and then less delightful. So we're going to be using this and I'm actually going to need 
my heavier duty cutters, which I'm going to grab real quick because I don't want to mess up my good cutters. So these are just cheapy cutters from the hardware store. If I mess these up, that's fine. Um, that's kind of what they're designed for is cutting heavier gauge wire. Um, so you definitely want to use um, uh, the right tools for the right projects. Um, one of the people, uh, I, I'm in a couple different groups online, and they were talking about how the tips of their cutters had broken off and um, the and they were really upset and complaining. And, and um, one of the spokespeople for the company asked them what they had been cutting and they had been cutting really heavy gauge steel wire. And um, they said, well, if you cut heavy gauge steel wire with these fine tipped cutters, of course they're gonna break uh, because they're not rated for that. So it's always good to take a look at what your tools are designed for and then use them for that. Because otherwise, you know, uh, they kind of wear out very quickly and that's super unfortunate. All right, so I'm going to cut off, oh, four inches or so of this wire, this bronze wire. I'm gonna set this off to the side. And then one of the other things I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a file, and this is just a metal file, and just lightly go over the ends of this. And this is taking off any of the burrs that may have been created when I cut the wire. And since this is going to be turned in on itself, it's not going to be the end of the world if it's not uh, completely super smooth. But for me, I like the jewelry to feel nice. So I'm going to just lightly cut that off or uh, file that off. And if you're really careful, if you want to be extra careful about uh, making sure that this is nice and smooth, you can use um, what's called a cup burr. And that can also take down any kind of sharp places um, but you can also sand down the metal as well. And that will make sure that the, the ends are nice and smooth and not super jaggy and will, will cut you. Now I've got a couple different um, pliers set up here. I've got this big honking bail making plier and I have this smaller bail making plier. And I'm gonna use a smaller one first. I'm going to put this towards, um, this is a smaller one that I'm going to be using. I don't know if you can see that or not. And then I'm just going to roll this towards myself. All right. So you're making a little hook or a little eye kind of like that. Now, you'll notice that I went in the opposite direction of the curve. And there is a reason why. Um, metal has a memory and it will naturally want to conform to the shape. And since it was on a roll, like so, there's already a natural curve in the metal. So it's gonna want to conform to that and you can definitely make it not conform to that. However, uh, you know, instead of fighting against this, um, we can uh, work with it. So I'm just gonna roll this in. And so I've got this shape that's kind of like this, which kind of looks like the thing on a when you've got those little balances. And the next thing I'm gonna do, and you can, you can be more precise about this if you want, you can get the ruler out and kind of measure it. I'm just going to eyeball it, but I'm gonna find the center of my wire. And I'm gonna put the this is the biggest bail making uh, plier. Now, if you don't have the, one of these handy dandy pliers, you could use a dowel rod or anything that's kind of round and has that shape. Um, this is really convenient because you can just grab and go where some of the other things like a jig or, or whatever, you might have to have it mounted to a table. Um, and so then you just bend this a little bit at a time on each side towards um, each other. So they're going like this. And it's gonna make this kind of U shape. 
like this or this amphora shape. Now it is a little bit still bendy and springy. So if you do have to do any adjustments, do it now um, because it's still kind of, uh, you're still able to do this. Now you do want to have a shape that has a nice big uh, ample um, area here and is a little bit tighter here. And this, there's a reason why. And the reason why is that if you've got a bunch of things strung on here, it's less likely that they'll come off if they have this, right? Right? So one of the other things that you can do now to make this extra sturdy is you set this down and then you have a bench block and uh, either a nylon hammer or a rawhide hammer. Um, Donna says, I wish I could manipulate 14 gauge wire, but my arthritis says no. Um, you know, there's a lot of tips and tricks that you can do um, to set things up so that you in yourself, you don't have to do all the work. You know, if you use leverage and um, use other tools to kind of manipulate it, uh, you can get so that you don't have to put any pressure or stress on your joints. Um, one thing I would recommend doing is um, there are a lot of different books on blacksmithing and uh, I would recommend picking one of those up at the library and looking through them, especially when they talk about making curly cues and jigs and different things like that. Uh, they can't touch them, you know, they can't touch the metal because it's super hot. So they have to use different jigs and things set up so that they can uh, manipulate the, uh, the metal that they're working with. So I think it's a really cool thing to look at those um, different techniques because then you could apply that on a smaller level so that you, your hands or joints don't hurt. So that's just something to keep in mind if you do have uh, arthritis or are dealing with any kind of joint pain. All right, so I'm just going to set this in there. Now I am gonna hold this close together because as you work hard in these the, the metal, it will want to splay apart. So I'm just holding this together. And work harding it this way. And I'll wanna flip these this over. Uh, do that so you'll it'll remove some of that springiness, but that that's okay Now you could definitely take this u-shape and customize it more to your liking um, So you could definitely do that um, and one thing that you can do is there's um, like a ball peen hammer and you can hammer your loop and that will flatten this out and you can make it as decorative as you want. I like the hammered texture, so you could definitely do that. Um, this, I'll get a different hammer because that one... Like this is a ball peen hammer. This is the the ball part and you can just gently This is actually a chasing hammer, but um, It'll work And it adds a nice little hammer texture to it Which I think is pretty when the cat the light catches that Um and you can just hit it like this. This is also work hardening your piece. So you'll have less springiness. And it adds a fun texture. Now, if you don't want to add the texture, you can always put this in a wood, put a piece of wood, and the wood helps absorb the shock.
but this helps the, these loops not come apart later, which is super important because you don't want your piece to be all super wavy gravy. All right, so I think that's a nice, you know, you could spend a long time doing this and you could actually take and hammer this using this side and flatten this down and really splay this out. There's enough material that you could do all kinds of things. Now there's two different kind of blows. This side of the hammer is a compression blow and this side of the hammer, the ball part of the, or the ball peen part, um, this spreads the metal. So if you want this to have a nice gentle swell to it, you would hammer with this side and it will help spread the metal wider. And then you would use this to flatten it, if that makes sense. All right, so we've got this little U shape and it's pretty solid work hardening. Um, I could spend forever going in and embellishing this. You could even wrap the wire and make coils and before you uh, manipulate it, slip those on, or you could wire wrap it on there and make it more decorative. It's really up to you. Um, Facebook user says, late to the party, what kind of wire is this? It's bronze wire, 14 gauge. Um, this is from Rio, but um, you can get this at some hardware stores. You probably won't find the bronze wire, but you might find brass. Brass is a lot harder of a metal, so you will have to probably anneal your metal if you're going to manipulate it. So just keep that in mind. All right. And then Harry answered that. Um, so there you go. I'm going to set this off to the side because we won't need our hammer anymore. And if you need to, if you need to adjust, you can always use your round nose pliers and get those in a little bit tighter. If you need to plug any kind of gaps. Now, another thing you can do is just like a jump ring, you one side stationary and um, the other side you can pull this. It's better to use like bent nose pliers so you can get in there really good. And then you can um, adjust it like so, and then bend it back into place. So if you have any super wide gaps in between the wire um, or in the kind of the base of this form. All right. So from here, then we're going to make different charms and amulets and things that we can hang off of our um, piece. Now I've got some chain. This is an antique brass uh, uh, plated chain. And I'm going to use this for the base of my necklace. Um, but I'll add that later um, because all we're doing is gonna add a jump ring to connect that. Um, but we'll do that later. All right, now I also have this smaller chain and this is um, some more of the, the kind of 10 millimeter. This is a fun kind of decorative chain. I don't know if you can see that, um, but we've got this kind of small chain and what we're gonna do is cut off maybe Oh, an inch or two of this chain. And so we've got this little segment of this kind of figure eight chain and we're going to attach this, you know, you can put it like so and kind of test out how far your, your charm or amulet will hang, right? So you can do these at all different length, lengths and uh, it will change how far your pieces dangle. So you can use this chain to kind of, uh, you just have to kind of play around with it 
until you're happy with this. Um, I used to sell these little chain charms in different little bins. I had these old egg um, containers that you would use for porcelain. And, um, you know, I would hang those off of them. All right. So let's see. This is a... Um, let me find one that I kind of resonate with. All right. So these are part of the new Allegory Gallery uh, fine pewter line that we just recently acquired. There's lots of different globally inspired charms and jewelry components. Hey, look at this. This is kind of cool. This was by accident, um, just how the, the beads fell. But I think it's a cool idea. I'll zoom in so you can kind of see it. Isn't that neat the way this kind of worked out? Those all kind of naturally fell in there, but I think that's a clever idea. And I might use that for a project. So you may be seeing something similar to that. Maybe let's swap that one out for a moon. Maybe if that's smaller. But anyways, that there there's a little idea there. But anyways, so here is a little bead. Um, I've got some head pins here. And I'm just gonna open those up. Oh, those are eye pins. I don't want those. I've got a head pin here. And if you have anything with a hole that's too big, you can test it to make sure that it will um, stay on your piece, but test it like so and pull it and see if that will come loose or not. Let me adjust this a little higher because it's kind of blurring out some of the stuff. All right. So you want to make sure that your head pin doesn't pull through your bead. And there you go. This one is, the hole is fairly small, so I won't need to worry about that. But if you also wanted to add a little bit of color, you could also put a bead there at the end. So you'd basically take the bead and put this, let me get a more colorful bead so you can see it. And put that at the base if you wanted to. And you could have it like so. So there's all different kinds of ideas, but I'm gonna just put this plain and you can put that like so. All right. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a, a wire wrap loop with my head pin. I've got my round nose pliers here and I'm gonna go up about a fourth of an inch and just bend this over. Now, everybody wire wraps differently, so you may see people doing it way different than I do, and that's fine. And then I just bent that up so it makes that kind of shape. And before I close that loop up, I'm going to find the ends of this chain. Now, since this is a figure eight chain, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this because this is super, super tiny, but I cut the chain link in half. And I don't know if you can see that or not, but there is half of the chain link is still there. So I'm gonna have to go in really close and trim that other half off so that you just have a full link instead of a, that half link there. And that's the same thing that happened on this side too. Now it's really small chain, so um, you just kind of have to go with it. And then I'm going to put this through the link on this side, and I'm gonna put this through the link on that side. All right. Now, if you wanted to use other things than the fine pewter line that we have, uh, definitely go for it. Use the things that make you happy and kind of fill you with that emotional resonance of a positive um, that makes you feel good, right? I'm just wrapping this chain or this wire around my wire wrap link or my ding dingle dangle. And before I get too close to the end, I don't know if you can see it or not, 
I'm going to just tuck this in just a little bit and make sure that it's kind of curving into my form. So that way when I cinch this close, it will snug nice and uh, tight to the, um, to the coil, all right? So I've made this little dingle dingle charm and I can put this on top of my little U shape and then hang this from my U shape. So I can get all these kinds of different, I can load this up with as many little charms and amulets and beads that I want. And the great thing is, is that if I get tired of something, I can always just take it off, you know, I can switch it out. So if you wanna have a burst of color, you could add different colors. And it's a great little way of having a little collection that you can swap out and have a lot of versatility in your work. All right. Facebook user said, great tip. Thanks. Now, if you wanted to add, these are, um, I've got some Buddhist charms here. And those would be great. You know, this is a substantial enough piece that that would look good. Um, I think if I add that, all I'm going to do is get a jump ring, a nice big ample jump ring. And this one's already opened up. I'm going to slip this on to the piece. It's got a fun back on that too. And close this up. Now, I always use my tools. I know some folks, they they like to just use their fingers. Um, I find that, you know, if you've got the tools, why not use them? Also, if you stress your, your joints and different things, you know, that's where you're going to end up with problems. Now, so this one is a little bit of a bigger, this is not going to slip over the ends of this. So just keep in mind that this one is not one that you can swap out as easily as this one. All right. So this is a nice way to, you can, if you've got kids or um, if you've got somebody special in your life, you could put birthstone charms. Um, it's up to you. Oh. I've got some really cool um, ocean jasper beads that I like. And um, so here's... Here are these ocean jasper beads. And I'm actually, ocean jasper is, I've really been inspired by it lately because it's supposed to um, help with healing. And I feel like if the world needs anything right now, it's a little bit of healing. So I've got a couple little beads here, small beads. And the cool thing about this is I'll get another little head pin out. Um, Don says, I want to wire wrap inside that you and add more pretty beads. Um, you could definitely do that. The only thing though is if you make this too wide, it makes it kind of hard to take things on and off. So with this piece, it's nice that you have the versatility and choice of of putting things on and off. Also, it will make it so that the beads slide nice and smooth, but you could definitely wire things on if you wanted to. It, you'll just have to change your design up. And for instance, like you wouldn't be able to just add a jump ring if you make this too bulky, but you know, you can do all kinds of things. And also if you close this up, you won't be able to take these on and off. So just keep that in mind because it would be cool to wire wrap across and make kind of like an abacus design. Um, however, if you do that, you will have to either cut this off or um, add a, uh, a jump ring that you can kind of open and close. So just keep that in mind. All right. So I've got this ocean jasper and I'm just gonna layer up some different beads. This is a great way to use chip beads if you want. It makes almost like a little Karen thing, you know, the where, um, you know, they put those in on different trailheads to mark where the start and end of a trail is. Um, they're kind of a, 
a sign uh, spiritually of uh, finding um, finding your way. Um, so I think that's kind of cool. I'm using different, I'm alternating the colors just a little bit so that there's not all one color stacked next to each other. So there is a little bit of variation, but you can definitely play around with this. And if you don't like something, you can always take it off and string something else on. Um, and that's, you know, that's the beauty of beading is it's all up to you and what you want to do. So if you want that, you could definitely make something that's like that. Or if you wanted to have it more look more like a Karen, I would take these little, these small ones out and kind of graduate these onto the head pin with some of the chip on chip action. Let's see if I, I kind of, I think I like this better, but um, one of the things is I'm kind of uh, choosing how to string these up because they don't all fit together. It's kind of like puzzle pieces. Sometimes the chips want to fit together and sometimes they don't. So it's kind of up to you to figure out um, how they best nestle into each other. If they don't fit smoothly next to each other, uh, it could be all right. But sometimes when that happens, uh, they can get chipped and crack. So uh, it's a little bit better if you have them so that they nestle against each other and it makes it nice. And um, yeah. Miles says, or you could make some faux Chanel earrings with two C's. Yeah, you could if that's your jam. Um, I think that, you know, it's up to you on how you make that look. Um, that's not really my style, but if that calls to you, then then do it. Um, all right. So I'm just going to add a wire wrap to this. And I'm going to make this one a little bit fancy. And what I mean by that is I'm going to get the bench block out again. I'm going to put these off to the side. And I've got this. I'm going to put the head pin here. I've strung up my beads already. I'm going to get the ball peen hammer and I'm going to have to raise, maybe, I don't know if I can do this. I don't want to hit my camera, but I'm just going to flare this out at the tip. And you don't have to hit really hard, um, but it does add a little bit of a decorative finish to that. And if it's sharp, you can always take and file this down so it isn't sharp because you don't want to cut yourself or others. Or maybe you do. I don't know. That's a personal choice. All right. I'm just going to wrap this around. And I'm going to do, I'm going to leave a little space on this one so you can see a little bit of that wire. So I'm just making a loop here. And I'm going to hold this stationary, kind of like a mandrel. Actually, what I'm going to do is before I seal this up, I'm going to put this on. Now this one, if you put a jump ring on this, it will hang down a little bit nicer and you can swap it out. But I kind of want this to stay put. So I'm just going to wire this directly onto my loop. And so I'm holding this like so. And I'm only going to, I'm going to twist this so that that, that paddle is kind of facing out. And I'm going to wrap this around. Now, if you do have the, that paddle shape, it is going to want to kind of slip like you just saw. But um, I think that's fine. And you can actually twist this and you can do this before you do this. So it's not a pain in the butt to to kind of get in there. But I've got round nose pliers, some fine nose round nose pliers here. I'm just going to twist this in. So it makes a little bit of a curly cue at the end of that wire. And that doesn't look like much of a curly cue. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, I probably should have done that before I wired this on, but oh, well. 
All right. So, and then I'll just flare that out a little bit. So it looks more like a, a intentional kind of thing instead of an, uh, a, a, a wire wrap loop that looks like it was abandoned. All right. So I'm just putting this around, bending this around. And I, the thing is, is I don't want to bend it so much that I end up um, breaking any of the chips. There we go. That looks a little bit better. Um, and you could definitely, one, before you wire wrap it, you could get that really uh, twisted and make a really nice, well-defined curly cue. Um, me, I kind of jumped the gun and started wire wrapping before I probably should have, um, but that's okay. All right. So if you, and also if you have a, a longer wire wrap or a wire, longer head pin, you could do this and make it a little bit more decorative. So can you see that? All right. So there you go. So this one got a little bit tangledy on that, and that's fine. But um, while well, I've been manipulating this back and forth, and that's something to be expected, is that sometimes these pieces will want to go awry, um, and you'll have to kind of, uh, if you're going to wire stuff directly onto it, it makes it a little bit trickier. But what we'll do is... Get this less tangled. And I think that slipped through the jump ring. Now the easiest thing is just to open and close this jump ring and then it will be done instead of me trying to untangle it. And I'm just gonna do that real quick. All right, I'm gonna put this back on and then we'll add so sometimes it's easier to make these off the the piece, off the um, off of the little loop, and then sometimes it's easier to add them directly onto your um, your kind of amulet. So it's up to you how you do it. Um, some of them you have to do them on the loop because if you use a closed loop, kind of like how we did with little Karen then you kind of have to have it like that. But if not, then, so here you go. Don says, tangly danglies, yep. Miles says, two Gs for Gucci. If, if you like that, you could do that. Um, that's up to you. Um, but I kind of feel like it, it's so small that it doesn't kind of read like that. All right. So I'm going to add maybe another ocean jasper. I like that ocean jasper on this side. So I'm going to get another head pin. And wire that one up. Now you could, if you, um, if you have a small short head pin, you can always wire wrap a or add a jump ring onto it, and then that way you can have as big of a of an opening as you want. Now I hold these stationary and you work with the bead so that I can kind of get into those small spaces without actually having to move my hand around a lot. So I'm holding everything stationary and not kind of adjusting too much. Okay. So we've got this little dangle. If your metal is uh, thick enough and hard enough, you could do a simple wrap loop over. I know a lot of people like to use the one step looper 
I'm not a huge, that's not usually something that I like for myself, but if you wanted to do that, you could more than, you could definitely do that if you wanted. Now, another thing that you can add to make this a little bit more fancy and kind of fun is if you use decorative jump rings, like this one is a twisted jump ring. If you wanted to use that, you just open and close your jump ring. And that adds just a little bit of texture to your piece as well in kind of a low key way. Um, and you could also, if you wanted to uh, have more than one piece off of uh, your each jump ring, if it's a large jump ring like this, you could definitely do that as well. All right. So if we wanted to add another little dingle dangle to that, we could definitely do that. And I'm just going to do that real quick. I'll add one of these little tubes. I like this tube. Actually, I'm going to add a little bit of color and put one of these little green ones on the end and then wrap it. And then I'll just create a wire wrap loop again. Now, if you go too high on your wire wrap loop and you need it to be closer to the base, you can always walk your loop down and that just basically means you twist it until it goes down a little bit lower. And that way you can, uh, it won't be so high, um, especially if you have like a little bit of wire left, like your tail of the wire isn't very long and you want to coil it, then your coil isn't like way far high and then you are your bead is like way far down. So again, I'm going to kind of tuck that in a little bit and then just have that nestle in nice and sweetly. And you can always kind of uh, tap that down a little bit and it'll squeeze in. All right. So let's take a look so far. I like these when they're really layered up and there's lots of stuff going on, um, but that's up to you again, like how much you wanna add or not add. And this one is wanting to be stubborn, but the more of these pieces you add on, the more it will fill up and will tangle less which is good because this one is kind of annoying when you're trying to do all this stuff but you are flipping this around over and over and so it uh, it will kind of want to come off so you kind of have to play around with it but i think that's a neat idea so that you can have kind of a amulet pick things out that resonate well with you the other thing is that's nice is that if you do mix metals, you can have different things like the copper and the silver, and it looks natural. Suzanne says, very easy to personalize, a great gift. And Donna says, I love that. And I love this look. So it's up to you. When you're finished adding pieces, you can always add more later. Um, and if you have them, you can always swap these out. Like this jump ring is fairly big. So if you wanted to do that, you can slip this on and off. Um, but when you're done, all you have to do is take your chain like so and you open and close a jump ring or if you wanted to add a bead you could do a, a wire wrap link in between if you wanted to add a little bit of color so you could have it like that or if you have a lighter color it might pop a little bit more so you could definitely wire make a wire wrap link here or you can open close a jump ring if you want it to be a little bit quicker and then you would just have this be the base of your necklace, the rest of this. And you could switch out different chains and put, um, you know, if you have a lot of little 
leftover bits of chain, you can link those together and make kind of a collage of different chains. Um, and if you wanted to, you could also slip different lengths of chain on this like regular, you know, just have um, lengths of chain just hanging off of this. If you wanted more movement, and a little bit of glam kind of glam rocker style, you could do that as well. And you could have a fringe of chain kind of hanging off these. It's really up to you and what you want to do. But I think these are really fun to have a lot of little movement and texture. And like uh, Suzanne said, you can really personalize these things and make it unique and suit the person that's wearing it. All right. So Debbie says, thanks for a great video. Well, I hope you all enjoyed that. Super easy peasy. It's up to you. You could add as many of these, like there is a really cool little bird here. This bird would be cool, maybe. Put that in there, put it on a head pin and add it. Now, if you wanted to add one of these little bead frames, you could do that as well. I think frames are nice because they kind of say, well, this is special, this is important. So if you wanted to add that kind of uh, way or this kind of device of showing that it's special, you could definitely do that as well. So really it's up to you on how you want to do that. Now let's see if that pulls through or not. It doesn't. So um, we'll add maybe this mermaid. And you just fish this through on the other side. So she's hanging out. Um, she's got a wide enough tail going the other direction that she could, um, she's not going to twist a whole lot, which is kind of good. But just to be on the safe side, what we'll do is we'll add some beads so that she's kind of in the center. And you kind of have to do this off at an angle like so. And that way, um, let me see. We'll start with a round. So string this on, string a round up, string one of these kind of uh, little off-centered loops. And then maybe I'll string up and around here because that will fit nicely. And put that and just really fill this up full if it'll fit. Uh, it won't fit, so I'll just take that off. And then you kind of have to adjust it carefully. But once you get the pattern right where you want it, it's not going to fit. So that's okay. I'm going to put that in there. It's a little bead frame. I could probably find a bead that fits in there and works a little bit better. But it makes it look like she's sitting. And you could have that be one of the little dingle dangles. Now, I do like that frame to be filled up. So I'm going to add a couple of these size 8 seed beads. Maybe two more. This is another way to inject a little bit of color to your piece if you um, want a little bit more color. I know that this, this is a, kind of a, a muted, more metallic vibe to it. Um, but yeah, so there you go. I don't know if you can see that very well, but she's kind of hanging out and you could put that on there. Let me just string this up. Now these are also fun because if you wanted to make earrings or something off of these, you could always just make these little wire wrap, uh, dangles. And then, um, you know, you could have it be on your little, your amulet necklace, 
Or if you wanted to, you could swap it out and put an ear wire on it and have almost instant earrings. And then you've got kind of double duty. Um, and because you're the one who's making it, you know, you could do it any way you want. Okay. So I think this is a really fun idea. It's a great way to ha use up all different kind of leftovers in your collection. If you've got like a really special strand that you use for a necklace and then you had some leftovers, um, you could definitely put that, use the leftover beads in there. Um, and also you can coordinate too. So if you wanted to make a little collection, you could easily have a little collection of beads that kind of all go together. So I think that's fun. And we could add that. Let's do it. I'll add it with the jump ring. Let me look for another kind of decorative. Well, I won't use a decorative. I'll use one of these ones. So really, it's up to you with how much or how little you add to one of these pieces. You could also, if you wanted to, add more texture to your loop. As I mentioned earlier, you could add some um, a wire wrapped, uh, wire wrapped the the um, the U shape, your amulet collector, if you wanted to. And kind of, you have to be careful not to make it too jumbledy, because then they won't all sit kind of nicely. But really, like Marianne said, so many possibilities. So it's up to you how you do that. I'm gonna show you a really quick way to embellish this link. All right, so this is 20 gauge bronze wire. And I'm gonna cut off about, oh, six inches or so of this bronze wire. I'm gonna take my round nose pliers and I'm just gonna bend this over so that it makes this kind of like paper clip shape. And I'm gonna string this up on this side. And then I'm just gonna carefully maneuver this so that I can get in there and coil this up. Now you probably would wanna do this before you added a bunch of charms. Um, so that there's less likely of a chance of this getting caught up in your charms. But, you know, let's make it a challenge, right? And you can just wrap this around and around and around. The goal is not to make this too, get the wire too chewed up because then you're gonna see those, those kind of kinks in the wire. So you will want to have this be nice and snugly wrapped and not be too kinky um, because then you'll see it and then it'll look kind of wonkadoodle and you don't want it to look wonkadoodle. All right, so just keep wrapping, wrapping, wrapping. And if you are done wrapping, I'm just gonna finish this wire off, how about it? So I don't have to trim this and end up with a little giblet of wire floating around in my life. And when you get kind of closer to the end of the wire, this end can be sharp, so you don't want to get stabbed by the wire. So um, just be mindful of that, because sometimes the end of the wire can get sharp. So when it gets closer to the end of the wire, I like to use my pliers to manipulate the end of the wire, and that way um, it keeps it from getting stabbed. And that way when you go to make your margarita, and cut those limes, it doesn't burn. And then, so if you do have gaps in your wire, your kind of coil, all you have to do is get some, uh, just compress it. 
So I'm going to take my pliers and use that to help compress. And then I can also get tighter in there as well if I want. Okay. Michelle said a giblet of wire. Yeah, I don't I don't like to find those on the floor with my foot later. That's less than desirable when you have the blood time. All right, so there's still a gap in there. I'm going to put this like this and kind of press. I'm going to compress my coil down. If this was shorter, I could just use my pliers to push and squeeze them like this. But this this is a little bit wide for that. So if you want to, if you had a shorter one, you could go like that and squeeze them tight. Um, and all the cool thing about this is that this is not patinaed wire. So if you patina this in liver of sulfur um, and then polish all the highlights, then you'll get a lot of really incredible texture that comes through. And this will look way more decorative and more elaborate when you can see all those kind of wire details. So that's another option for you as well. And from far away, it doesn't look that incredible. But um, when you do add that patina, you could. Uh, and if you don't like it to be black, you know, you can always take patina paint and smear that into the recesses and have colors in the, in the recessed areas if you didn't want it to be black. But I kind of think that the black kind of unifies everything because these are antique pieces and that kind of antiquing uh, brings out the details and the charms. So then it will kind of unify all of the, the pieces in your creation. All right. I think that's fun. Okay, let, let me jack this stand up a little bit. And I'll flip this camera around. So it's around. Hi. How are you all doing? That was a little bit. Uh, I had I caught the um, my charger cable on the. I, I caught my charger cable on the end of the fire extinguisher. So today we made this fun little amulet necklace and uh you can definitely embellish this as much or as little as you want the this charm this buddha charm has a lot of uh what's called negative space in the design so if you wanted to add dingle dangles off the end of this you could definitely add it add more texture and color um if you have some sari silk we just added a bunch of sari silk to our online store um, that's allegorygallery.com and you could add little bits of sari silk and make a little tie um, a little um, knot on there and then if you want you can take some really super sharp small scissors and chop up the ends of the sari silk and make a little fringy tassel um, to add a little bit of color and kind of like bohemian texture if you wanted to you could add tassels off of this. The sky's the limit, really, as far as your finished piece goes. Now, like I said, it's super easy to finish this off. And I'm actually just going to do this really fast. It's just opening and closing jump rings. So if you, you know, you won't be able to see. You could add, um, I like a lobster claw for this. But if you wanted to make this over the neck, over the head, um, you could make this over the head as well but I've got a spool of chain, so I might as well. Now this, this chain that I have, this is in the Lovebird kit, um, but um, if you need chain, and we don't have our chain listed on our website, but if you want some of our chain, just send us an email at info at allegorygallery.com 
And that way you can um, and just say, hey, I'd like to see some of the chain you have. Um, and I'm looking for XYZ metal. Um, we have a lot of different spools of chain. There's this really cool skull chain that I just love, love, love. I'm surprised we still have it. I'm actually not that surprised because the foot traffic in the store has been fairly slow um, since we got it. So I'm not 100% surprised that we um, didn't sell it all yet. But if you, uh, I think it's really cool. And it's also got a nice cool gold plating that's kind of a matte gold, which I'm on fire for that matte gold plating. But to finish that necklace up, all I did is open and close two jump rings and I may, you know, I'm trying to find the center. So there you go. And you just slip this over the head. No. So this is a really great layering necklace. I don't know if you can see that or not, but that's a great kind of little piece and you can adjust it or add embellishments here, but that's up to you. And you could make that kind of a piece. Um, Facebook user says I'd hammer the loops as well to add more texture. You could definitely do that. The one thing about hammering the loops too much is that the more you manipulate them, sometimes they can splay apart. So you would just have to go back in and squeeze them down a little bit. Julie says, I love this so much. Thank you. Um, Suzanne says, I have yet to use liver of sulfur. If you do use liver of sulfur, I like this liver of sulfur. It comes in a gel. This lasts a lot longer than the, the crumbles. There's crumbles that you can get and you dissolve those in hot water. Um, and uh, those crumbles, they, go, they seem to go bad pretty quick. They send you a thing like this big and the crumbles kind of go bad. But this I've had it for a couple years and it's lasted a long time. You just dissolve it in hot water and um, make sure you have a lid for it because it is smelly. Um, it smells like rotten eggs um, when you're working with it. So it is kind of uh, whippy, you know, it smells pretty bad. So if you don't want that, you know, go outside and use it. And it will, uh, you know, that way you don't have to breathe in uh, all those rotten, farty kind of smells. Um, Diane says, I love that piece. Have to watch replay. Too many farewell parties going on. Well, uh, hopefully everything's okay. I didn't, I didn't see any farewell parties, but, you know, Michelle says, really like this. Norma says, or thread it on a silk sari instead of chain to go around your neck. You could definitely do that. Um, and also, if you did that, you could put it in through one end of here and kind of billow this out and put it through the other side. And that way, none of the charms will come loose because it will kind of have a little catch here that will prevent the charms from slipping up if you wanted to. And Michelle says, really like the Jasper. Well, thanks. I hope you had fun hanging out with me making this. I had fun with all of you. You can kind of see the background. Did you see, did William show you the ugly heads in there? Besides, I'm not talking about my head. I, I collect jugs. They're called ugly head jugs or ugly jugs. But anyways. This is one my friend Sarah Sally Legrand made for me. She made a teapot and she said it looked like me. So um, so she sent it to me. But this is an example of one of those little jugs. They're ceramic and they're from the south. Um, apparently I like heads because I've got skulls and heads and all kinds of things decorating our house. Uh, Diane says, Northern people are leaving for summer, so we leave on Saturday. 
Um, that's exciting. All right. So hopefully you all had a good day. Um, let me know in the comments what you're working on. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up or like, love, whatever. Um, the more people that interact with the videos, the better. Um, and of course, I probably should say, if you are on the YouTube, go on over and subscribe to the YouTube. We're about 30 or so people away from reaching our goal of 1,000 subscribers, which is pretty big for us. We were watching this video and this guy got like 500,000 subscribers and he had a real time kind of counter and you could see like it would go up by like 100 people. But I'm also not 20 and blonde headed and into fitness. So, you know, I can understand why he has 500,000 followers and we have 960 something, 70, um, you know people like like what they like you know um but anyways so you know hopefully you all had fun today um and uh william will be in tomorrow hopefully we've had some hiccups with the weather but he'll be in tomorrow i don't know what he's going to be doing tomorrow um but hopefully it'll be fun and if not then i'll jump on with a tutorial or something um, I think I, if the weather is good, I might go to Contemporary Craft. Um, if you are in the Pittsburgh area and you want to hang out and work on metal stuff, just let me know and we can kind of set up a time. Um, I'm not there as much as I would like, um, but I am there frequently and usually on Thursdays. Um, so if you do want to like get together, I can give you a tour of Contemporary Craft and you know, we can make some stuff. If you do use the studio, there is a small rental fee. Um, usually I can kind of slip folks in, but if you are gonna be there all day making stuff, uh, they are a nonprofit. So if you wanna kick some dollars over them, over to them, it's a good way to make sure that they, you know, can keep the lights on. Um, yeah. So Don says, I finished a bunch of projects, stuff with sea glass. I'm thinking wire work is calling me. Well, definitely let us know um, what you end up making. You, If you do make stuff using our products, um, you can always join our Facebook group. That's the Allegory Gallery Design Challenge group. It's a really lovely group that's super supportive and everybody kind of hangs out and shares things and it's, it's a lovely group. So if you do make anything using our products, head on over there on Facebook to the group, the Allegory Gallery Design Challenge group and post some pictures. It's always fun to see what people are making. I don't really know. I can't think of anything that I'm supposed to be talking about um, besides YouTube and that we added sorry silk um, and what is this? This is April. Um, yeah. So I, uh, the next thing that's coming up for the great bead extravaganza is the great bead trade. That's May 13th. Oh, and on May 14th, I will be at Contemporary Craft for their family day. I'm gonna be doing a demo with epoxy clay, right, which I think is really fun. Um, I'm going to have to get some bezels together so that folks can kind of smush stuff into them. And yeah. All right. So I see a couple different people tuning in uh, just now. You'll have to watch the replay because we're all done. We made this. I think that's pretty fun. Um, Thomas works for um, Soft Lux. And they have a line of craft wires that come in all different colors. And if you wanted to add a little bit of color to these, you could easily do that. Now they are a coated wire. So if you go to liver of sulfur, um, these pieces, the, the craft wire won't patina. Um, but if you use the raw metal like this, they will be able to patina. So there you go. Hopefully you all had fun. I think this is a really cool design. I used to sell the heck out of these. So um, if you do sell these, that's totally fine. I'm, I'm down with it. I'm probably not the first person 
to come up with this. Actually, um, Cynthia had a design that was kind of similar where she had a, a loop and did that. And there was a bird head on it, a bird head bead that was on a beaded loop. And I would go to the trade show and says, sometimes you feel like a bird head, sometimes you don't. And I would take it on and off. Um, and that necklace, um, all of the back where this is chain, it was uh, tiny faceted labradorite beads. And there was a clasp that they had and you could just open it and slip off the different charms. So if you're not into chain or you have metal allergies, you can definitely use a different base for where your necklace. And then that way, um, you don't have any contact with your skin. So that's something to think about if you have to think about that. Um, and like Norma said earlier, if you wanted to use sari silk, you could do that. We have just listed some recycled sari silk that's all hand dyed on the Allegory Gallery website. Um, and those would be really fun if you braided them and did a little attachment. That could be really cool. So lots of different options. I like that. If you did the kumahimo, you could do kumahimo. I like that. Um, so yeah. Well, thank you so much for hanging out with me today and making this necklace. I had a lot of fun and hopefully you had fun as well. I'll see you around. Bye.